everybody, this is Zach Beach with SmartRealEstateCoach.com. Welcome to another Deal Structure Sunday. If this is your first Deal Structure Sunday, this is when we bring on our members of our communities or we walk through deals that we've done personally or lessons learned that we have gotten in the trenches doing creative financing deals. SmartRealEstateCoach.com specializes in all things creative financing. I encourage you to go back and watch. We have over at this day and time, uh, hundreds of deal structure Sundays where you can go back and review all these types of deals. And that way you can best understand how to implement creative financing. Creative financing us, that means that we don't deal with banks. We don't put down large down payments and we don't ever guarantee or personally guarantee debt. But we have lots and lots of different ways in order to create a creative financing deal. And we have a unique one here for you today. Uh, we're going to have some fun with this. Uh, we have Salone out of Georgia. Salone, welcome to Deal Structure Sunday. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's nice to be here. Yeah. I'm guessing you're, are you calling in from the doctors or your nurse? Or tell everyone your background before you came into Smart Real Estate Coach. Sure. Uh, my nine to six is I'm a doctor of physical therapy. So I work in an outpatient clinic with workman comp patients. Uh, and so that's what I do throughout the week. I originally came into a uh, smart real estate coach, our Wicked Smart Academy. And well, I purchased the packet in 2021. Um, and it took me a year because of my travel with work. I was doing travel health care. took me a year to get settled in a place where I could actually start implementing the strategies. So uh, in, you know, beginning of this year is when I fully went full force into uh, with the Smart Academy. I love it. And, and Sloan, you, you had some real estate background. Is that accurate? Yes. I actually started uh, doing a little bit of fix and flip in undergrad. And so my first two projects were multi families, which were a little, little more than I should have started with, but I came out on top with both of those. Um, I continue to have a rental during my, during my time of travel. And when I went back to school for my doctorate, and so I've, you know, did the landlord part of real estate. I've done fix and flip. Um, and now I'm getting into the creative real estate uh, part of it. And I'm loving that process as well. Well, I love it. Um, so multiple different backgrounds, right? When it comes to real estate investing, also physical therapy, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say that's like the natural path that people would take. They go become, they go, they go become physical therapists and then real estate investors. Um, but <laughs> That, that's how everything comes together, right? Your path is your path, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, what attracted you to creative financing? Um, and then we'll start diving into this deal. Yeah, the the stress of uh, the lack of stress of having to guarantee loans and or um, having to apply for mortgages and things of that sort, because I have a little background in real estate are already, I know that process, I know how daunting and long of a process that can be. And so it really drew me uh, that I could, you know, get a project or, or a property under contract or taken by basically helping a seller with whatever their um whatever their need is and basically help them and also other buyers that's looking for creative ways of purchasing a home. Yeah, and you bring up some amazing points. This is actually a unique deal um, in general because, and this isn't the first time this is this has happened inside our community, but so maybe talk about, all right, so you actually originally had this property. The intent was to do a buy and hold, but then you decided to pivot on your exit strategy. Uh, why don't you walk us through that process and why you decided to make that decision? And the reason why I'm asking is because uh, I actually had a conversation with a gentleman. He had 650 single family homes that he was renting. Uh, and he had his own reasons why he was every time uh, he one of his lease came up, he decided to go sell them on rent to own. He was slowly exiting out of uh, the rental business. So I'm just curious on why you decided to then make this decision uh, to then go from um, you know long term buy and hold to selling on rent to own. 
I mean, it's a couple of reasons, but I'll start with the first, um, definitely being financially, you know, having a property that I could potentially turn into a six figure deal from a property that's only $65,000 really appealed to me. Um, I love the idea. The second part of that is I love the idea of helping first time home buyers. And so with this specific deal, uh, it really allowed me to really see how helping buyers, like what that really meant, like this, the particular tenant buyer for this property, they were looking for opportunity to purchase, but because of credit and things of that sort, they could not. And so they literally told me that I was their answer prayer. And that really did something to me like that. I, now I know not just by what you guys share and how much you guys pour into me or into us as a community, but that this thing really helps people. And so I don't see myself going back. Every rental will be a rent to own because I do want to be a part of the community that is helping people become first time home buyers. I love it. Yeah. So let's, and I'm going to show the deal structure Sunday here in just a second of the deal structure um, seat in just a second. So um, walk us through, I know you originally acquired this property um, utilizing some traditional financing. So just walk us through that path, right? And then we'll talk, um, then we'll talk about the exit with these tenant buyers. I am on a list of a number of wholesalers and this particular property came upon my desk uh, because they know I also do rentals and it was 65 uh, I'm sorry, it's 80,000 to acquire. It needed very little renovation. Basically, it needed cosmetic things. It needed updating. The home was built in 1950. It still kind of felt like 1950. So yeah. it just needed some updating. Um, and as I was going through that process, I, you know, knowing that the market in that area rents were going for about 1300 you know, so I knew once I refinanced, I would still be netting a good bit of profit. I, you know, the idea came, why am I not doing this as a rent to own? I mean, I'm in, I'm in a community, I'm learning all this stuff. Why not put it into practice? And so that's when I pivot in deciding instead of just offering as a rental, I'm going to actually offer as a rent to own process. And I went to my coach, uh, Mike, and, you know, he helped guide me through that process. Well, let me hit on a couple of things just in case it's the first time people have uh, listened to this. So um, one is great opportunity to receive leads from wholesalers, whether it's just direct to creative financing. I certainly get plenty of them. And the simple conversation that I have with people is just anything that doesn't fit inside your current buy box wholesaler, meaning like if it doesn't fit in the 40 to 60 cents on the dollar and your seller would rather get maximized price or, you know, just won't accept a low ball offer, send them to me. And if I end up getting a deal, then we'll try to structure something. Um, so that's one thing. That's a huge lead gen, especially in today's market um, with um, the evolving market right now and, and the ability to acquire real estate deals um, from wholesalers because they're just, they're, they're not able to now, most wholesalers are not able to now put it under agreement, have the market appreciate in six months and be able to exit out. Uh, right. There's a lot more slimmer margins. So now we're actually able to provide additional solutions to wholesalers. And then two is when we talk about rent to own. Now, I know everyone's had the cousin, the, the aunt, the uncle that's tried rent to own one time that didn't work. Um, we have a very specific process here at Smart Real Estate Coach and Help Out Associates all across the country. Um, do these real estate deals because we have a you know 80 to 90 percent success rate. And the reason why is because we actually treat this program as a legitimate transformation process from being a tenant to a buyer. So we're making sure that they have multiple third party uh, specialists, including mortgage specialists or credit repair specialists to ensure that when we create a mortgage readiness plan, they're actually going to be able to go ahead and qualify for this loan. That's the only way that I would always I would ever feel comfortable doing a rent to own program is if I knew that they had a legitimate chance to become homeowners. So that's exactly what we do here all across the country. So um, before we dive into the numbers, can you talk about who these buyers were, why they may need rent to own, um, and then we'll we'll talk about you know after you create these wins, then we'll talk about how you're gonna get you're gonna win as well. Okay, so these buyers they were both um, second marriages. Uh, you know they had 
had divorces. Now they have a blended family and divorce kind of took a toll on their credit. Um, and now they're, you know, married and they're wanting to, to purchase a home together. And so this opportunity, they were looking for a home. Um, and honestly, they saw one of our bandit signs and came to the property, um, that particular day I was there with other tenant buyers. And so, you know, they came right on in and immediately she said, oh, this is my house. It was just that, that like, um, awareness that she had. Then the next day she brought her husband. Um, he, he loved it. Uh, again, they were looking for opportunity like this in a nice, quiet community. And it just, it just fit them, um, because they could not qualify through a traditional loan because of credit. Both of my business owners, both of them are, you know, self-employed. Uh, but it's just, it's not that they didn't have the money. It was the credit part of it. Yeah, it makes total sense. It's actually probably one of our biggest uh, tenant buyer pools is self-employed business people or, right, somebody had a legitimate hiccup in their credit. Right now with the rising interest rates, if you're watching this in, you know, October of or November of 2023, rising interest rates have skyrocketed. All these buyers that could qualify for loans six, 12 months ago can now no longer qualify, which is a fantastic opportunity to help somebody get to the finish line. So I love that you did that. And it was a great pivot. We've actually had you're the second person this like month or this, no, the last 60 days that has changed their rental into a uh, a, a tenant buyer scenario. So let's let's walk through the deal now. Sure. That's what everyone's been waiting for. Let's walk through the deal. So originally you bought this for uh fix and flip. Uh, I'm assuming you went ahead and refinanced from hard money to 30 year mortgage. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. So you went ahead and do that. Uh, so now you originally bought this property for, was it 89,000 you said? No, 80,000. And, and 80, okay. I didn't even have to pay my first mortgage on the hard money because the renovations happened in two weeks. And literally once we went on the market, the tenant buyer saw it within that first week and we were closing by the end of that second week. So this was the type of property that just needed like a little bit of cleanup or a little lipstick is how much yeah. money did you actually put into the property. So you bought it for 80. How much money did you actually put into it? We end up putting about 12, uh, yeah, 12,000, $12,000. Okay. So you're like 92 into it. Okay. Yeah. And then, so then you go ahead and you sell it to a tenant buyer for 189,900. Yes. Okay. So we already have a, a um, huge markup there, right? You had a, renovated house in a nice area to tenant buyers. Um, your buyers come in and they put down uh, $5,700. Yes. You did have to make, I'm just walking through these numbers. You did uh, collect first month's rent as well, uh, but mm -hmm. you did have to make it sound like your first mortgage payment. So difference between yes. those two is like 422. So at the time of signing, uh, you received $6,100 up front. Is that accurate? Correct. Awesome. All right. I'm just making sure we're tracking. But then, of course, we want to make sure that we set these buyers up for success. So if you see now, other deposits from the buyer, 13290 So those will come in installments. Um, could you walk through um, how you arrived at, the, say, the 13000 how you structured the additional deposits? Yes, no problem. So the thirteen. The $13,290 is the difference between the $18,990, which is actually the 10% down that uh, I required for the property, which is being sold at one, you know, $189,900. Yep. Uh, and so we structured the payments. It's actually a 60 month term. So okay. we structured the additional payments, uh, one additional payment for the next three years uh, with the idea that the tenant buyers would like to pay that off before. But because I want them to be successful, I told them that's fine. We'll do one additional payment every um, for the next three years, but it has to be paid off the down payment within that third year. Got it. So okay. that's how was there like, um, cause a lot of time, uh, we structure down payments around either taxes or bonuses or hot seasons, uh, these being self-employed, 
was there any consideration on that um, for that down payment? Honestly, we talked about that. There was no consensus that there were a specific time period where there's like a bonus or even like the tax season part of it. They were able to say that part of that would go like 50%. They would put toward that year's down payment. But also they talked about certain seasons of their business being more profitable. And that is what would make up the uh, one year deposit that we agreed upon that amount. So it's more about the season for them and when yep. they're busy. Got it. So uh, it's roughly like say 4,000, just over 4,000 that's due before the end of each year towards their deposit. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. And then, so you have a monthly payment of 885 and you get a, a monthly payment from your buyer, right? Because we're, we're treating like a homeowner for 1300. So you got cash flow of 422 per month on the property. Yes. And it looks like uh, you got twenty five thousand dollars in total cash flow over sixty months. Yes. Uh, this is a really good deal. Let's walk through this deal. So you marked up the house eighty nine thousand. So if you're listening to this right now and you do fix and flips, uh, and you have the ability to hold on to some of these deals, I mean, we have we have members of our community that certainly do this. We've also had business partners that we would do this with every like five or six deals, um, where it's like you don't need to cash it out. You look at this. She bought it for eighty nine thousand. Put twelve grand into it, so she's in it for ninety two thousand. Sells it for double the price. Sells mm -hmm. it for double the price to a tenant buyer. Um, so if you don't need the money right now, amazing exit strategy for you to do this. Even if you're not buying creatively, is to sell creatively. Because if we look at this, you marked it up eighty nine thousand. You're going to have roughly twenty thousand dollars of principal pay down. So out of the eight eighty five, uh, there's a portion of that that's going to go towards principal. Um, and over the course of the 60 months, it's another 20,000. You've collected 19,000 basically up front. So when this property casts out in 60 months, you have what you bought the house and put the money in for 91,000. So almost equal to how much money you bought it for and put in for renovations. You have $91,000 on the back end. Uh, that's a total profit of $116,000 on a house that you bought for 80,000. Yes. I, I hope this like light bulb is going off. If you're listening to this right now, or you're watching this right now and seeing how much return you can get uh, on a property, lower end properties too. Um, if you listen to this in California or Southern Florida or whatever, uh, there's ability to make that much income on a $89,000 house, uh, which is extremely powerful. This doesn't have to be extremely risky type transaction in order to increase your profits. Uh, it's actually a very risk averse type transaction that we're doing here. So Salone, amazing job, number one. Uh, way to continue to stick with it and 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 put together creative deals. If you're, you know, uh, let's let's take you back to when you first you're about to get started in creative financing. You know, somebody's watching this right now that this is maybe the first time they've been exposed to this, or uh someone were to ask you, like, hey, now know what you know now. Um, what would your advice be? to somebody that's interested in getting involved in real estate investing right now? I, I would say creative real estate financing is going to be the most um, uh, less risky option for you. Uh, with the team that's at Wicked Smart Academy, the coaches, the Slack community, all of the scripts, all I mean, the entire academy on demand, all of that, if you know nothing, about real estate will set you up for success. I will say when I first started real estate, I knew nothing and I jumped in. Thank God I had, you know, mentors around me that had did it before me that helped me, but that's not always the case. You just may want to create that family wealth um, and you know nothing about real estate. I would say start with creative, you know, real estate financing because you will learn a lot. And then all these other strategies will be able to add on top of that. But while you're learning, you're still able to acquire properties without having it put under your name or without having the risk of guaranteeing a loan. So and I, you, you couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. Um, that's exactly what I said in all these podcasts. I, I love it. It's the uh, creative financing is more or less the bridge for every other real estate strategy out there. I mean, if you can know creative, you can do any other strategy. Um, what an amazing 
amazing deal that you put together. Um, I will include in the in the description uh, how to get access to our Wicked Smart Academy and start where exactly where Salone did as well. I also want to make sure that uh, you get access to our free Amazon bestselling book, our first one, Real Estate on Your Terms. All you have to do is go to wickedsmartbooks.com forward slash YouTube um, and go ahead and access that. And that will be your first step towards getting involved in creative financing. Everybody have a fantastic rest of your day. Salone, amazing job. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Deal Structure Sunday. Thanks, guys.